Hey, what's up? It's Chris from the Droning Company here with John Bride of Autel Robotics. John, first of all, demo yesterday. You were phenomenal. I mean, you're a real showman. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say I've been doing this for a long time, but I've been doing this for a long time. So, yeah, <laughs> that is how it rolls. How long have you been doing it with Autel? Uh, well, just over a year with Autel. Okay. However, in the drone industry, 21 years. I was also a, a, a reseller, um, so I came from that experience of kind of showing, presenting, training, and doing like that. Coincidentally, uh, my role here is to be VP of technology and training. So that's basically what I do for the company. That's excellent, that's awesome. So yesterday we saw the demo of the Dragonfish. Yeah. Needless to say, one of the most impressive technology pieces in the drone industry right now. Tell us a little bit more about what you went over in that, that demo and uh, you know how that can help the commercial sector. Well, you know, the big one is, that I, again, coming into the technology, coming into the training. I love both. So when I have a passion for this, when I first came to Autel, the Dragonfish was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. And again, 21 years, I've seen a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, very difficult to impress me on just technology and things and training and all this other stuff. So anyway, when I came to it, I wanted to show that, hey, we really are taking a, a drone that seems like it would be very intuitive and easy bring it to the next level to not just show what it can do, but also bring that training aspect, the demo you know, idea, what you're going to actually do with it. You know, It is engineered for public safety. It is engineered for, for the most part, for doing overwatch and things. It's not a mapping drone as of this time. You know? So kind of making sure people understand on the commercial side of what it's capable of doing and why it does what it does is really the big thing about why I, I bring it to the table. Okay, so Dragonfish is used in a public safety capacity. What capacity is it used for mostly? Do you see a common trend in terms of police, fire, what, where is it used really? Well, I mean, if, if you think of like, again, what, what, what does the drone do? You know, any drone, so, you know, if, it's, if it flies it, it delivers a payload, the payload is gonna do something for you. I mean, that's really the, the mantra of a drone. It's not necessarily, you know, it, we could do it for delivery, we could do it for, and the Dragonfish offers thermal cameras, zoom cameras, all these other things to basically keep an overwatch of a space or an area to make real-time decisions. We're not doing, again, mapping to some degree. We're, we're taking images of something that's happening actively right now. So this could help a ton with basically fire stuff. Just taking a look real quick, watching your guys. Where are they at on the ground? Where is the burning happening? Let's go into the forest area. Finding those hot spots, and and again, did I mention it? It can fly 18 miles, you know. So uh, it doesn't have to, because that is something that always comes up. Well, what do you do, be, you know, for beyond visual line of sight? And I have to address that with, well, your car can go 200 miles an hour, but you don't always drive it that fast. So 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 it is up to you to make sure you follow the rules. But what this does is help us keep the drone in the air for a long time, flying on the wing, uh, upwards of two hours on on one of our units. And uh, you know, keeping that overwatch and making real-time decisions, like I said, and, and that is what public safety does. They want to do things right now, make decisions right now. Absolutely, so. absolutely. That application is so important in the field. And you know, the other thing that I really noticed in the demo yesterday of the Dragonfish was just how intuitive the interface was for the pilot in command. Uh, you know, I, at one point I saw you had the camera pointed at the demo crowd, and it identified almost every person as an object down there with a, with a little indicator. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that software works and you know what you can use it for? Sure, so you know, we, we call it AI, but you know, there's, there is a database there that the camera, when, when zoomed in and whatever is in the field of view, recognizes as a target. We, we can track up to 60 different targets um, as long as it recognizes it as such. So cars, boats, people, you can label them out and just go, which one do you want to watch? that, I want to watch that. Zooms in and tracks that item until you pull it off or maybe it jumps to a different one if it loses uh, its tracking, but for the most part, we're, we're doing a lot of interaction with the screen. In the demo yesterday, I also talked about basically the ability for the aircraft to manage itself. Yeah. We're not running a dual pilot system here or dual operator. It's one operator that has an aircraft that knows what it's doing and you being the camera guy telling what, where and what to do. So the aircraft will take that payload, as mentioned, take it to where it needs to go and manage how to keep itself flying without you having to have a second person do that. Okay. And, and I saw on the screen, you know, you're sharing that software that does the, the autonomous operations. It also does the, the, um, the flight planning, uh, so you can actually set up your flight ahead of time. Is that pr proprietary software from Autel, or is that something else that you would need to download? No, it is proprietary. We, we use an app called the Voyager app, okay. you know, so everybody's 
very familiar with if they've got have an Autel product, the Explorer app. Okay. Uh, but this is the app called the the uh, Voyager app. The Voyager app is built to basically run the the Dragonfish uh, products and. Uh, you know, there is uh, easily, you know, we have manual, we have sticks, so you can fly it manually. But, you know, when you do that versus doing a level of automation, um, again, it kind of takes the pilot away from, from having to worry about all that. It just, it, it manages that itself. So it does a pretty good job with it, too. Oh, that's really impressive. Absolutely. Now, your role, I want to talk a little bit after sales, what people can expect. Yeah. You, you do after sales training. What can somebody expect if they come to you and say, hey, I need some help learning how to do uh, operations on the Dragonfish. Yeah. Um, so great question. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-loaded. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just. Kidding. Um, so what is training? You know, training is 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 typically you know people are going to learn something, consume that, uh, comprehend it, and then apply it. Right. That that is kind of that's what training is. However, I've seen a disparity in the industry of what I would consider training, and I call it parking lot training. I bought a piece of equipment, we're gonna go out in the parking lot, I'm gonna show you really quick how it works, what it does, maybe a day, you know, I'm gonna, and, it, and that's the training. Sometimes that training is not directive from a manufacturer. Some, of, some manufacturers of drones do have that, but not very many do. Um, not that DJI doesn't, but they, they did really, you get a manual, here you go. So I was trying to change this with an Autel, with my, with my training initiative, to bring on a certification that says, you know how to work and run an Autel product. And not just run it, you're proficient with it. You can make decisions, because again, as we go back to public safety being real time, you don't want to be telling your guys because you're fumbling around with stuff while the bad guy's getting away, running away, and you don't know how to operate that thing. You need to be very good with it, comfortable with it, know how to maintain it, know how to run it. So that certification is there, to address that, and I've, I've created this um, on top of helping later on, bringing you into my LMS system and having videos to refer to uh, at any time during that that, uh, that that you're a certified operator of the of the aircraft. Yeah, that, that sounds like an excellent like just set of procedures and, and help that you can get after the sale. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum here. So I have one last question for you. If you were approached by somebody that was trying to get into the commercial drone sector, whether they're going to do mapping, inspections, public safety, whatever the case may be, they don't know where to start. What would be your first piece of advice for them getting started and starting to build their portfolio? Well, number one, know how to run a business. Number one. That's good advice. <laughs> That's number one. That's real good advice. So. Why is this? I've been doing this again for a long time. I've seen drone service providers come and go. And just to give you an analogy, I don't go, I don't know anything about framing. I've never done framing on houses. But I went and bought this hammer at Home Depot and now I'm gonna become a new, a new business. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am, I don't know much about the drone industry, but I may have experience with with framing. I might be in the construction industry. I might be doing something like that. And now I'm adding a tool. And that tool is going to help me increase my productivity on whatever I'm doing. But when we get into the marketing and the and the taxes and the people and everything else, that gets a little complex when it comes down to trying to do something and figuring out what piece of equipment you're going to buy. So back to my construction analogy, I go to Home Depot and there's 50 hammers. Which hammer are you going to buy? <laughs> if you're not a carpenter, you're, you, you don't know the difference. Between, I don't. I certainly yeah, don't. So you may not know the difference between the drones and what they're capable of doing. So do your research on what the tool will do for you and make sure that you have a use case for it. Then you can move on from there. And some people just start brand new, learning how to fly the drone, learning how to do stuff with the drone. And we have a lot of products for that. And then we have products to move through the cycle of, of whether we're doing commercial use or not. You know, but make sure, <laughs> make sure you do your research and really understand what it takes to try to do it. That might be the best piece of advice that we've heard today, honestly. Yeah. So, hey, before we get going, where can people find anything about Autel, website, social media, where can they find you? Uh, so, autelrobotics.com is probably the easiest one to find us. Um, the, uh, of course, you can always reach out to any of our dealers. We have a great uh, dealer network in order to uh, purchase products, so just be a little little careful with, uh, again, sometimes when you buy stuff, it's a quick purchase. Hey, let me, I just want to go get something, but you want to look at that after sale support as well. It's not always Autel that does it, and some of those dealers do a great job trying to help their customers out, uh, but autelrobotics.com. Excellent. Hey, John, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. The Droning Company is a job agency for drone pilots which also incorporates a high-end magazine about the industry. 
So people search this when they're looking for a drone pilot. They talk to the pilot directly, but either via email or phone. We're not involved, we don't take commissions. Never will have, never will.